Hello, all you listeners out there. I decided in the past few months to start reading a Bible. I'm reading here from the Holy Bible that comes from Ascension. Uh, it's the Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic ed Edition. Um, there's also a to the 1966 edition and it's quite interesting because what I like about it first of all is that the writing is so nice and large and it gives you an, a, a full detailed explanation of the different books and uh, how to read them but I think that for us depend you know notwithstanding your religious affiliation or the lack thereof, I thought that you would uh, join me on this, this adventure of reading the Bible, um, just to try to get some allegory and some information that could help us in understanding things that we're going through now. Now, I'd like to start with the first book of Moses, which is commonly called the Genesis, and um, it's about creation. Um, it, it starts that uh, by speaking, God creates the heavens and the earth. And it, this is a phrase that refers to all that exists, both in the spiritual and in material sense. He brings forth these things from nothing and all creatures depend upon God for their very existing at every different moment. So it starts with the six days of creation and the Sabbath. And this is where I start. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. The darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the night darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament, firmament with, from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit, trees bearing fruit in which in their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed and each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, 
the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and bring the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening. And there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the cattle according to their kinds and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant necessary, yielding seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and the host and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God created from all his work, which he had done in creation. There's another account of creation and uh, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Um, we can add that in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens, which when no plant of the field was yet on the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up for the Lord God, had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the grounds, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. When the Lord God formed man from dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and 
the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which flows around the whole kind of, or the whole land of Havilah where there is gold and the gold of that land is good. Belium, Bedelium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which flows around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is Tigris, which flows out of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in one day, for in that day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to all birds of the air and to every beast of the field but for the man, there was not found a helper for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made it to a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. There a man leaves his father. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Now, of course, this has a certain connotation today and certain meanings which may not be akin to all of those who are listening and have different ideas. But this is a book that was written for a specific purpose. And what I really like about going to read it, which I have never done, is to remember certain allegories and take from these words something that we could use. I will be coming back and talking with you about the fall of man. Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy this. Write to me under this video and give me some clues, some ideas, some uh, ways this could be improved. Uh, that would be really helpful. Have a pleasant day. Bye-bye.